Hi, Internet viewers. Frank Rauscher again. We're on our way. We marked, uh, from the last video, we marked the mantle out, uh, the crease that we're going to put in the cheek area, uh, and the wing line all the way through here, all the way down and around, and this way here. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to uh, put that in, and then we're also going to do part of the rump to reduce some of the material in, in that tail, I should say, not the rump yet. We're not doing the rump yet, but we're getting there. So uh, we'll continue on. Just All right. Now, what I'm going to use is I'm going to use, uh, I could have used uh, a, what I call a diamond bullet, which has a point on it. And this is a ruby flame, which is what I'll use today, okay? There's several bits you can use, different ones, but I just want to introduce you to uh, the different bits we use. And uh, my favorite, which is really no longer available, is the ruby uh, pair, but I do have it in diamond, and that, that does a nice job as well. So just wanted to show you some of the things I use along the way here. So bear with me here, and turned on my uh, micro grinder, and I'm going to get my optimizer which is my magnifier, and that keeps me on track. So here's that crease we made along the way here with a pencil. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna undercut by laying the point of the bit right on the line, okay? And I'm going to track through it a couple times. I hope you can see this. So I'm going to get it up as close as I can. And just to help it along, so because I knew I took the pencil line out of there, there's what we have. It went from almost onto the beak, not quite, right on up to the back of what I call the cheek area here, okay? So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get the point right into one of those valley edges and soften it out ever so slightly. I'm hardly touching the wood. And then I'm gonna do the same thing right here on it the upper side and, and we have like two edges because you're running that through it it stands out so I'm trying to soften that so it looks like it goes into the valley and then out of the valley and I don't want any crease line in there I'm just trying to have a nice flow okay so that's one another thing I want to do that uh, I we left off when we were doing the cheek, uh, I'm sorry, the beak area, we had undercut along here. We, we flattened that area like that, and we flattened the area like this, going to the center line. Same way on the other side, and then this side too, and this side. Now, we have like a diamond shape in there. What I want to do is, because we have a burn in there, I don't want to go all the way out to the end, but on the beak, I'm going to put like a chamfer, and I'm going to round that over, okay, on that side. And then I'm going to come in on this side, 
you can see maybe the chamfer showing up a little bit. And then I roll that around. And it's ever so slight. So it puts like a, this looks like it's rolling in, but not all the way out to the end. And this looks like it's rolling in too, okay? Then I'll do it on the other side as well. And I'm talking really light, a light touch. So that should take care of the beak as far as the shaping. And that's got it pretty good. Okay, now let me go to the crease on this side. And I'll lay that point down and just notice I have my finger resting on the head here, besides holding it, so it's guiding me, okay? So, you don't want to do it like this, because you're going to be all over the place. So, always try to get your finger on something to steady it, and that will really help in the control of the... Yeah, I'm talking about control and I'm bouncing all over right now, <laughs> even in control. So, bear with me here. Okay. I got, I hope you guys are seeing this okay. I say guys, I hope there's ladies involved too. I know when I was teaching here, I had a lot of ladies that were very good at carving as well. So they did beautiful work, just like the gentleman did too. So I am taking that chamfer and rolling it out. Then I'm gonna flip to the other side. The chamfer going. And if I see edges, I go back and forth until I get rid of them all, okay? That looks like that has it. Okay, it's like a crease in there. And I just want it to blend away. Okay, now that we have that, now we're gonna go for the mantle. That line we had that went from here up to this point, and then this came up and joined up. So here we go. I'm gonna. Here's the cheek line right here. I'm gonna just pencil this in in case you can't see where I got that shaped in there. I'm gonna start right here. Now I'm going to go a little deeper on the undercut. From that tight. If you notice, I don't know if you can see it real well or not. I'm taking this down maybe a good 30 seconds. Something like that. Then I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm coming off of here. It's shallow in the beginning, but as we come around, it gets deeper. I'm going to come up. Now, let's take a look at that. I think I'm a little shallow right here, so I'll go a little deeper. And come across here. And when I say deep, I don't mean that deep at all. 
I know I'm filming this, but I'm going to run my pencil line down there. I don't know if you can uh, see the depth of cut that I made to establish that. But and I'm just running down that valley right back up to the cheek. Okay. Now on this side going towards the tail side I'm going to blend a lot of this away. So I'm going to basically use more of the bit rather than the point. But I'm going to come around here and I'm taking an area about from here to here, just slightly away from it in the beginning. Now I'm gonna do the same as I come up here. I'm gonna to try to get rid of that channel edge completely that I created on this side. So what's gonna happen is this side's gonna stick up more if we do it right. So. And what this does, it preps us for when we start drawing feathers on here, the areas that are established, the cheek, uh, the cheek, yeah, the cheek is one area, but uh, the mantle, I don't know why I want to say cheek for the mantle, but uh, the mantle, it's slightly raised, not a lot, but it's slightly raised. Now, I don't know if you can see that or not, but this side has like another edge to it because it's the side we didn't touch. So I'm gonna come in and I'm gonna just lightly soften that like I did up in the cheek area here with that crease. I'm coming in here And I'm just softening that edge. I'm really not trying to do a lot of shaping because we're going to do some uh, feathering within here. And I'm just softening this edge where I took it away on this side. See a little I forgot right here, so I'll go back in. Now, that should take care of that. But what I did is I cleaned it out so far, but I'm just going to just take a little bit more so it blends back in to the body here of the wing area. Now, we're gonna go for the wing, okay? I'm gonna start up here. And I'm gonna cut in. I'm gonna go down maybe a 16. And I'm staying under the line, okay, along here. I'm leaving the line there, but I want to undercut right under that line. Now, as we come up and join the mantle here, I'm going to get shallow again. So, I'm going to get lighter and lighter to the point that when it touches the cheek there, I slow down. Now, this is going to be our initial shot here, so... I'm going down, I would say a good 16. And of course, right up over there. I don't know if you can see that well or not, but what I want to do here is, I'm not going to use this bit because it's just not going to cover the area. We have, and I'll 
throw the pen throw the pencil line in here so you can see what, what we've done. This is the bottom of that valley and it comes right on up to here. So we got some impression depression in there. So now on this side, here's that one edge and this edge right here, at least up to about where this comes up almost to the tail. I want to stop short of the tail. I want to roll this and get rid of this so it's rounded over. So I'm going to switch over to a pair. A pair tends to have the right shape to get the roll that I'm looking for. So I'll come in and I'm going to round that edge as if we were rolling it towards the center of the body. Okay. Just like so. And I'm going to come down to remember these lines you put in. Once we hit this one pencil line for like what the rump area is, I'm just going to stop right here for the moment. I'm not going to try to get into the tail at all. I'm just trying to get the... I'm trying to get this to look like it's coming out from under here and rolling around. Not a wall or anything else. Just rolling right out and rounding over. So it's... You want the edges. And you want to get that rounded over. Okay, so that should take care of that. Okay, so let me go to the other side now and see if we can't get that edge for the wing on the other side. Okay, so here we go. We get the flame back in there. And then, like I said, if you don't have the flame, you can use a bullet. This is a diamond, and that works out really nice as well. There's a few bits you can get. Even on the flame here, which is a ruby, you can also get this in diamond, and that does a nice job. So here we are again. Here's where we left off. That was the mantle coming up. This is the wing. It's joining up here and coming coming back. So we'll start right here. I'll go shallow in the beginning. And then I'm going to try to stay under the line. I'm going to keep the line there. Excuse me. And then I turn it around because I feel I have more control. I'm going to run that up this way. And this one. And this one. I'm going to make sure I get nice depth right in there. Okay. So there we are. There's our line. You can still see it. And I followed that right on down until we got to here. Now, I'm going to get my pair, switch it out. Get my pair. And the pair tends to do a nicer job on the rollover. The problem with the flame is it wants to dig in. And so you don't want that to happen. You're trying to round things over now. So I'm coming in here and I'm rolling that edge, that chamfered edge like we're, I won't say it's a chamfered edge, but I'm treating it like when we first 
started rounding the blank, we worked like a chamfer and then kept on going until we went and got a nice roll over. This is what we're trying to do. We're trying to come in here and get this. It looks like it's flowing out from that bottom of that valley straight out and around without having it looked like it has a bump or a wall or anything else. It looks like it's just rolling out. That is what we really want to try to achieve. So that gives us a nice rollover for the stomach area that's created here. I'm still seeing, I don't know if you guys can see it or not, as I move it around, I still see like edges there and I'll come over here and I it's the problem is when you have the light hitting you sometimes think you've got everything going away but it's not so you, you just move it around and I can see I have a whole edge going right up here so I come back and I hit it again and light tends to fool with you because you took it, you took enough wall, but it really doesn't get you there. So it takes a little bit more. Then I'll look again and see if there's a edge I left or something like that, or I didn't roll it enough. Okay. Then on this side, I got a little bit I need up here. Okay, now, let me also show you this. I'm gonna put that pencil line in the valley there. And it comes all the way back. Okay, and it comes up here and around. Now, we have an edge up here I'm not worrying about this one because when we start relieving feathers within here, this will stage it down. But this here is too high now and we have to blend some of that off. So I'm going to try to get the pair to come in and just glean a little bit off of there. Right here. I'm not going too far with it. I'm trying to get it to, to get down to that valley that we created, but not get too thin. Okay. And then I'm trying to get it to blend back into the tail without having uh, sort of just rolling slightly. And that's what I'm trying to keep. Okay, and if you could see that, I'm turning it around so you can see that on both sides, what I've done and how much I took off. Okay, now this area in here needs to be taken out in that uh, loop area in there, like that, that, uh, What's the U that we have created up to that pencil line because we had that slight arc run across. So I'm going to go now to, you could do it with a pair, don't get me wrong, but I go with uh, a hogging bit. And this one here is a tungsten carbide. And what I do is I look at the depth I have to go, which is a little better than a 16. So I'm going to come right up, right down the middle. And once 
Once I hit that pencil point out here, you know, I got that depth down to where it should be. And let me let me heavy this up so you can see it as well. This is I could go a little bit more, so on the end here. So that cut that I made going down goes right up to the pencil point. Now, what I want to do is drag this bit up with the arc, and it gets shallow at the end, but we don't want to go past this pencil point. So what I'm doing is making it concave in that area. So I'm dragging this up slightly so it's sloping upward. And I want to check my pencil mark that I didn't lose it on the end there. Then I'm going to come inward and try to maintain the whole thing there. Like so. So it's sloping down towards the center and it reduces the material out of here. And then let me heavy this up so you can see where my stop is. I'm trying to use this U as a stop, but we're gonna go past that in a minute here. This is just to keep you in control. And these bits tend to want to spin sometime out of control. So if you notice, I got my finger, this one, resting on the piece. See, this wants to wrap around and kick around. So stay in control. I'm coming up. Remember, you're sh more shallower as you come up. But the valley is down below. Everything slopes down, so you have a nice little concave area there, and you're maintaining this eighth of an inch in thickness that we tried to keep originally, okay? Now, the other thing I had you do was to run a line from the bottom of that eighth inch all the way back to here. And then I did, had to do it with the same thing over here too, straight back. So what I'm going to do now is take the material down. Here's where that rump starts coming into play, right here and here. Hope I can see go out of my camera range again. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to undercut down to this pencil line. And then I'm just going to smooth this out so I go right along the pencil line. And I gotta watch that I don't go past it. And I'm trying to keep that angle of this thing being sloped up. And I'm getting real close now to that pencil line. But these bits can take a lot off real fast if you don't watch out. So I'm coming in here. And I'm trying to keep that slope going down at the same time. I'm trying to trim it right on up to that pencil line. So here we go on this side now. Let's see the best way to go is this way. I'm watching my pencil line on the outside here. This, this one right here. I don't want to go past that. Now I'm going to come up. Concave in here. 
I'm not trying to get too, too thin. Now I'm getting a little choppy in there, so I got most of it out of there. So now to smooth the area out and to have more control, I'm going to switch back to the pair. But I use uh, the hogging bit to get to be like the workhorse and get most of the stuff out. Then we could come in and you have more control, it's smoother action. You can bring this right up to the pencil line and have more of control in here. And I'm doing it nice and slowly so I get right up to the pencil line at the same time. I'm making sure that the valley down in the middle of the swing is okay then. Just to get all the, of it smoothed out, I just run this through like this. And I do the same thing over here. So now we reduce some of the material that was on the tail and we're getting it down but we really need to do a lot more before we this is just uh like a preliminary okay and then what you can do is you can still see your center line so you can draw them back in and that helps so now what we have is we have the tail somewhat roughed out and we have uh, the rump sort of showing. It's stepped down. It still needs a lot more refining. And we're starting to create the wing line on both sides. I think we may need a little bit more in here and we'll, we'll judge that as we go. And this is rolling very nicely going across here you can see that but that's which that's what we need so if you can get this much done uh, that would be great remember this side on the mantle gets blended away this side is softened there's like an edge there and you're just softening that but you want to make sure you blend all of this back and that's done with a pair okay this is done with uh, the flame or the bullet, whatever you have that would get you there, okay? So, uh, and we're starting to get a pretty good shape in there now. The bird's starting to come. We're, we're gonna probably uh, get back onto the head and do some feathering and I'll show you how I do that uh, to bring it out and we'll be doing some lifting for the feathers up here and a lot down here and down here we really lift them up a lot so hope you got something out of this one and if you did please give me a thumbs up and uh, if you uh, would subscribe to my channel or pass the word on to other friends that are interested uh, i'd appreciate that as well so I will see you on the next video and see if we can't get this bird flying soon, okay? Thanks again. Bye now.